Brett, have you ordered from the online party store again? Even better, their dev team stopped by. Their app would occasionally take a little bit longer to respond and it was bothering their users. I told them, ah, those are cold starts. And I said we might have something in the serverless toolbox to help them find out what's happening. Stay tuned if you'd like to know more. Party On is an online party store running in the cloud and on Cloud Run, which is serverless. Their CTO had heard that cold starts is a concern for serverless applications, so they asked Beth, one of their developers, to look into the matter. A cold start occurs when a new container instance has to be started by the cloud provider to handle the incoming traffic. Beth asked her friend in the QA team how they think about performance. They said that it is important to define a clear pass or fail condition for anything you want to test. If the test passes, you're done. If not, you need to invest more engineering time until you do. Also, the pass-fail condition should not be affected by factors outside your control. This means that you should measure the server-side latency and not include the highly variable network latency between the server and the client. Beth first considered using an average latency for the pass-fail condition. But when she read Google's book about site reliability engineering, which is available online for free, she learned that averages can hide a long tail of very slow requests. Cold starts may be lurking in that long tail. The book authors recommend treating latency as a distribution and setting a target for a percentile of responses. Beth works with the QA and business teams, and they decide together that 99% of responses should have a latency of 300 milliseconds or less. Now they're in a good place to measure latencies in production and decide if and where to spend engineering resources to minimize them. Beth goes to the cloud console, clicks Cloud Run, and then the service for placing an order. The 99% latency has been 255 milliseconds over the last six hours. It meets the goal of 300 milliseconds. No engineering work is needed to reduce latency for this service, but the team make a note to investigate what caused that spike around 3.30. Next, Beth checks the latency for the service that users hit when they update their account details. The 99% latency of this service is over eight seconds. Beth needs to investigate the latencies. To do that, she opens the Logs viewer, selects Cloud Run Revisions, and clicks the Create Export button. In the pane that appears, she selects BigQuery and Create a new BigQuery dataset. Now, all new Cloud Run log entries are written to the BigQuery database, as well as the normal logs. Beth waits 20 minutes for BigQuery to get some log entries. Then, she clicks BigQuery in the navigation menu under the Big Data header. She runs this SQL query to analyze latency per cold or warm start and response code. The query assumes that latencies above two seconds are cold starts. The results show two things. First, row three tells us that cold starts, which result in the error code 503, have latencies around 120 seconds. Fixing those requests is top priority. Second, on rows one and two, we see that successful cold starts have latencies around six seconds. Reducing this is the second priority. Excellent. They now know what to focus on. Check out the next video to see how Beth and her teammates fix these cold start problems. In the comments, let us know your techniques for dealing with cold starts and other performance issues in your serverless apps. Meanwhile, I've got a party to get to.